Question number four. Order. Question number four, Materia Ture. Atina, Mr. Speaker, Atina Koto Itifari. My uh, question is to the Prime Minister. Katu Aya, Irongi Timana o Ana, Kau Papa Hire, Kawanatanga Kato Ne. Right Mr. Speaker, Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, yes, I have the privilege of leading a government that is ambitious for New Zealand's future, and our policies reflect that ambition. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Materia Ture. Does he stand by his special housing areas policy in Auckland? Now it's proven to be an abject failure. The Speaker. Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, uh, the failure really was the metropolitan urban limit in Auckland that actually choked off land supply, which I'm sure was one of the real lefty ideas that the Greens were promoting. <laughs> Supplementary question, Materia Ture. Supplementary. Does the Minister agree with Nick Smith that special housing areas are about, quote, helping Kiwi families to realise the dream of owning their own home, end quote? And if so, how many Kiwi families are realising that dream in the 97 Auckland SHAs with no home building going on in them? The Speaker, right Honourable Prime Minister. Answer the first part of the question, yes. If the member wants me to, I'm more than happy to read out the stats uh, I, I did. OK, so the member does want me to. All right, so as of the 30th of June in Auckland 2016, the advice my office has is that 1,300 homes have been completed, 2,200 building consents have been issued, 2,458 sections have been created, and 7,170 sections have been granted resource consent. Of the 154 special housing areas in Auckland, 26 have been built on, 15 have earthworks, and 88 are in some stage of planning process. Only 25 have no a consent or plan change lodge, but 16 of those were declared uh, in February to May of this year. Mr Speaker, I think most people would acknowledge that a special housing area is a way of fast-tracking uh, the development of these properties, but they still need to have RMA consent, they still have to have horizontal infrastructure, they still need to... Well, we didn't have them eight years ago, Order. Phil. What we, had, what we had was the metropolitan urban limit that we inherited from your lefty mates. Yeah. Supplementary. Order. Supplementary question, Materia Ture. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Is the Prime Minister defending the special uh, housing areas policy where 97 of those areas have no home building on them to date? Because it was always his intention that this policy was designed to support the property speculators and the land bankers. The Mr. Right Mr. Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, uh, members, quite incorrect. And in fact, the data I've given the House is, is correct. But, Mr Speaker, what I don't support is the hard-working young couple who go out and buy a house, who borrow money against uh, the, the equity that they've put down, only to see that house price halve. And that member has la launched a war on the poor. She is saying to the poorest New Zealanders who are borrowing money against their property that she wants to see them owing the bank more than their house is worth. And I think, Mr Speaker, there's a, there's, a reason, there's a reason why the Greens numbers are tumbling, and that is because order, people order, can see order. that. Thank you. Supplementary. Order. Supplementary, Mr Speaker. When order, the order, Prime Minister... Order. I'm just waiting for a little more silence from my left. Supplementary Thank question, you. Materia Terra. Thank you, Mr Speaker. When the Prime Minister said in April last year that the special housing area land bankers would be getting a terse letter from Nick Smith, does he think they were suitably chastised? The Right Honourable Prime well, Minister. Mr Speaker, given uh, only a very small proportion either don't have planning underway earthworks underway or building on them, I'd say that special housing areas have been highly effective actually as a way of releasing land. There will be one or two that, that don't go ahead. Uh, they were never guaranteed that they would, but what was guaranteed was that they would allow process to happen more rapidly, and that's exactly what's happening. What the member is trying to tell New Zealanders is, at the moment that the Minister of Housing designates an area a special housing area... Order. Point of order. Is no, it's not um, for the Prime Minister to uh, tell the public what I am saying in answer to my question. Order, He's no. answered my question. I, I, no, order, order. I think the point is that the questions 
was relatively short, and the answer addressed the question almost immediately. There's no, long to, no need to continue with the length of answer. Further supplementary? Supplementary, sir. Supplementary you. question, Materia Turo. And so now that the, uh, the uh, housing areas have failed... Order, can I have the question, please? Yes, thank you, Mr Speaker. So... Order, I, order. Less interjection. I'm inviting now the question to Thank be asked. Thank you, Mr Speaker. So now that the special housing areas policy in Auckland has failed, is sending, is sending terse letters to land bankers and property speculators going to be the new centrepiece of his comprehensive housing plan? The Mr. right Speaker. honourable Prime Mr. Minister. Speaker, well, firstly, I think we can see that special housing areas are a success because <laughs> houses are being built. Uh, developments taking place. But, Mr Speaker, I'll give the member a clue of what a terse letter would look like. Dear Mr and Mrs Blo Blogs of Auckland, I know you borrowed $450,000 from the ANZ against your $100,000 worth of equity or $150,000 on your $600,000 property, but now Materia Ture has managed to turn that into a $300,000 property and therefore could you sell your property with no equity left? That's what a 50% reduction in house prices look like. It's a war well, on the bring the, the answer to a conclusion. Order. Point of order. Point of order. <laughs> order. Point of order, David Seymour. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'd invite you to reflect on Standing Order 381, uh, which uh, asks that questions do not needlessly include uh, facts and do not include inferences or arguments beyond what is necessary to make the question intelligible. Uh, it's a standing order this member has been violating all question time. And the member is strictly correct. Um, I'm relatively liberal when I interpret that with allowing questions, but when a question starts, as the last one did, now that the particular policy has failed, I give a very wide licence in the answer that then may be given by the Prime Minister or a Minister. Question number five.